Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Loving Little Learners. This video is going to go over ways that you can increase student engagement during remote learning. It's also going to talk about ways that you can give your students incentives that will help keep them motivated to come to class, be on time, do their work, and to stay prepared. So I'm going to share over 10 different things with you all, and I'll be sure to link everything I discuss in the description box below. Stay tuned, and I hope that you find something that you love. So morning meetings are my absolute favorite time of the day. They are great for student engagement. Um, they allow your students to get up, get moving, start sharing with each other, and just to make connections. I know in all of our experience, we have that one student who wants to raise their hand in the middle of math class to tell us about what they did three years ago. So this is the opportunity that our students get to really share what they wanna say, get to talk about themselves, and more importantly, have somebody listen. So these morning meetings are fun because they're thematic, and every day throughout the week, they have a different theme. So we have Monday memories, tell me Tuesday, would you rather Wednesday, try it Thursday, and find it Friday. So in addition to having those themes, every week has a different um, theme as well, where you see the pictures are changed a bit to kind of just mix it up. So there's five um, themes for the whole week and five things that go along with the holiday for the month. Here is an example of the November meetings. And again, it just follows that same exact pattern where you have the same slide background for the week and those Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday themes, as well as um, this little timer in the middle. So this timer is a 30 second interval timer. And this is good just to make sure that your students all get the same amount of time to share. No one's taking too long, no one's not sharing enough. And it's just equal that way. That way we're not taking up your entire morning with the morning meeting, but we are taking enough time to share and get to know each other. Um, you guys can just easily present these on your your computer, whether you're doing Google Meet or Zoom, or even if you're doing hybrid or in-person learning, you can just put these on your smart board or just go ahead and print them out. So these are really fun, like I said, and they help increase student engagement. My students are in love with the morning meetings every single morning. It's our favorite time of the day. So I really, really recommend starting morning meetings to get your students going in a good, happy place in the morning. I love using the website Factile to basically create activities and games for my students to keep them engaged while we're reviewing certain content. So this is one that I used a couple of weeks ago where we're reviewing sight words, numbers, and letters. And it basically comes in the form of a Jeopardy game. So if you press play now, You'll see my game load. You get to choose how many teams you want, one through 50. I did a boys versus girls, so I just press two. And they have a buzzer mode that you can use during distance learning, but that's in the pro version. Um, and then you get to choose your team captain characters. So they have different themes. You can do fruit and vegetables. They have animals. And once you pick your characters, you're just going to start your game. And then you can see here, you have all of your different categories for numbers 100 through 500 point values. Um, so I did letters, numbers, sight words, counting patterns, and different things like that. So this was just a really fun way to review content with my students on a Friday where I, I did need to take the time to make sure that they knew the content that we have gone over so far, but I didn't want to do it in just a lecture-based way. So I made sure to try to make it as fun as possible. You can, if you get the pro version, you can put um, pictures or video clips or things like that to make it even more interactive. I just use a free version for now, but this is totally fine for exactly what I need to do. You can also make one of these and share it with your grade level. I always share mine um, with the other teachers if they want to go ahead and play this with their own students because we're all learning the same thing. So 
might as well help somebody out and not have them do it themselves. They don't need to. But again, this is just a really fun way to keep your students engaged while reviewing content um, and making it competitive and fun and getting the students really into it. These brag tag boards are a really fun way to digitally give your students incentives. So this is an example of a board that is filled out. Um, you can just go ahead and type in your, your student's name here, and then you can go and see all of the different types of brag tags that are available. About There's some for getting 100%, being good for a substitute, um, wonderful writing, mindful manners, quality work, working hard, perfect attendance. So whatever it is that your student earned, you're just gonna go ahead and copy and then go to their board and paste it on. So what I would recommend doing is going ahead and connecting this to some type of goal. You can say, once you reach five brag tags, you can have a free pass on a homework assignment, therefore giving them an incentive to um, earn these brag tags. And then the, it's just a really fun way to visually see, um, you know, what they're working towards and what they've done. You can share this with parents. So this is just a really fun way to make sure that your students are being recognized for what they're doing during digital and uh, remote learning. My next suggestion for a student incentive is to create something like a fun Friday. So for students to be able to participate in these fun Friday days, I would definitely set some type of criteria. So if attendance is a big factor and students aren't showing up for class, I would set um, criteria where students need to at least be seen for X amount of sessions in order to receive their Fun Friday invite. Um, if students are having trouble completing their work on Seesaw or on Google Classroom, I would definitely set a criteria that matches this problem so that you're handling whatever issue you're coming across during remote learning and you're also giving students an incentive at the same time. So if students go ahead and complete three of their five Seesaw journals for the week, then they should be able to come and join in on the fun Friday. Um, you can do the same exact thing for Lexia minutes or iReady minutes or things like that where students are supposed to be logging into a certain platform for a certain amount of time. And if they reach those minutes, then they are invited to our Fun Friday. So I would definitely make sure that this Fun Friday is outside of your synchronous time so that you do still meet those minutes for all of your students. But um, what I love to do for a Fun Friday is to go to Kids Bop Dance. My students love to get up and dance. And these Kids Bops um, videos that they have here available on YouTube, are really fun. So they're always connected to the most popular songs. They show the students the steps. They're fun and upbeat. And they are just really, really engaging. My kindergarten students love it. I'm sure any students, maybe K through three, would feel the same exact way. You can also go ahead and link any of these KidsBot videos to SafeShare. I recommend using SafeShare.tv now instead of Safe YouTube because Safe YouTube has had so many issues in the past couple of months. So go ahead and try to put your videos into SafeShareTV.tv and then you can play a playlist of videos that you have ready for your students on their fun Friday or you can do anything else that you think your students would enjoy um, doing together as a class. Another great way to give your students an incentive to work together as a class is to do something like a sticker book. So in the sticker book, there's a tab for every month. So let's go to October. And on October, you'll see something like this. So see what silly stickers you can uncover on your way to your prize. So you want to develop some predetermined prize or incentive for your students. Like after you meet all of your synchronous hours for the day, you guys can play a movie or you can have lunch with the teacher, something that your students really want. So 
every day that you feel like they deserved a sticker, you just come and delete one of the black triangles. So you'll keep doing that every day until they go and reach their prize. And as you see, all of the stickers are super fun and silly and the kids would have a kick out of just seeing what they uncover. I definitely recommend making a big deal about the stickers that you reveal and just how silly and fun they are because then your students are just going to be even that even more connected to um, this process and really be encouraged to earn a new sticker and see what they uncover and also continue to earn all the way to their prize. At the end, there's these little stars. And once they reach the star, that means that they've earned their prize for the month. So like I said, there's 12 months here. So even if you're doing summer school or even if you want to use this at home for your own kids uh, during the months that we're not in school, this is just a great opportunity to give any single student or class a incentive to work towards some type of goal. Another great way to increase student engagement and to allow our sessions to just be a little more fun um, is to go ahead and pass out art supplies to do directed art projects together. A big part of holidays and a big part of our thematic units are based on art projects. So this was something that we were really missing during the beginning of remote learning. Our grade level team has come together and we um, prep all of our art supply projects for the month and we give them out during our monthly supply distribution days. So if you're able to get to your students and get them supplies each month, I would go ahead and gather two to three projects that you guys can do together and give them all of the supplies. I would also make sure to make a note saying, please don't use these supplies or use anything without instruction from your teacher first because then they'll miss out on the opportunity to do it together. So art cra uh, crafts and art supplies and project days like these would just make our students feel like we're, they're having fun again and that they are kids doing fun things instead of just lecturing on the computer all day. So go ahead, if you can, get your student supplies create some plan to do some art projects with them. Giving your students a brain break is very critical if you would like them to be able to stay engaged during your entire instruction. And this is even more important during remote learning. So one of the websites that I use for my brain breaks is called Fluency and Fitness, and it's super fun. I'm gonna show you an example of what their videos look like. So you have a couple of different options. I personally like the Fluency and Fitness the best. They have a couple of different um, video options that you can choose from. So I'm gonna show you with the rhyming pictures activity. And for every activity, you can choose from beginning, if your students are just started out learning that or advanced. So this could be like a beginning type of um, activity and even summative at the end, you can use it for content or you could just use it to give them a break. So let's see. So for every video, you will have some type of um, question that they're answering, like which one rhymes, sun and bun, and they'll go through a couple of different questions and then they will have some type of fitness activity that they're gonna do. So it's fluency with answering the questions and then bam, they're going straight into fitness, which the students really, really like. As you can see now, they hear the music and they start to begin to do this fitness activity. I, my students love the letter recognition one, the number recognition ones at the end of the years, they start to do the addition. Um, so they have a lot of different options for fluency and fitness. So I would recommend taking a look at this website. The other website that I go to is Go Noodle. Most educators have a, a Go Noodle account. Um, something I just discovered is that if you go over here to channels, you can actually 
connect the, your Go Noodle to YouTube. So if you scroll down, let's see, it says added from YouTube here. And you can just take your YouTube URL and drop it into here. So like I told you guys, I love the Kids Bop um, videos. And so I just drag and drop these links into here, add a video from YouTube. And then it plays without any of the advertising. So it's definitely, it's like another way to do a safe share or a safe YouTube drop um, connected to your Go Noodle. And it still allows them to add points to their level. My students are obsessed with seeing their little characters grow and transform. So that way they still get their little brain break and they also get to um, continue on their level and see their characters progress. So those are some good websites that you guys can use for brain breaks that give your students the opportunity to rest their brain and to, again, be able to stay engaged throughout the rest of your lesson. It's always great when we get to recognize our students for doing something right. Um, we can create student incentives by participating in a student of the week award ceremony. So during virtual learning, I just simply present this presentation to my students. We all do one big cheer for the student that is picked for the week. And I then go ahead and deliver their um, award to their their parents class dojo account where i just am sending them a copy of the pdf so that they can print it and keep it for their child um these student of the weeks are really fun because you get to recognize somebody for something specific and you also get the opportunity to just celebrate um i'd like to do it at the end of the week obviously it's for the week but our our school this year has selected a theme of superheroes. So I tied in my student of the week to the superhero theme for our school, and we call it superhero of the week. So um, this is just a really, really fun way to give our students incentives to work hard so that they're chosen for the superhero of the week. You can also tie this to some type of an additional incentive, like if you're a superhero of the week, you don't have to do this or you get to leave class five minutes early, whatever it might be that you think your student would want. Virtual scavenger hunts is another good way to keep your students engaged, get them up and moving around during your lessons. So you can either choose to make these just kind of fun um, and personal, where they're finding something that keeps them warm or they're going around their house to find something that they can give to your, their friends, something that makes them happy or something that reminds them of their family and friends. So those are more like fun and personal questions or you can create um, a link to content. So when we were learning our shapes and colors, we did a lot of scavenger hunts where I would have give them a two minute timer and say, go ahead and find six items that are in the shape of a circle or whatever it might be so that you can go ahead and create these content connections while still giving your kids the opportunity to get up and moving around rather than just sitting in front of the screen. So the personal connections are within this morning meeting resource um, and you can just totally make up your own scavenger hunts and just make a little slideshow or simply just tell your students what you want them to go get and you guys can have them come back and share what it is that they found. So it's just a really fun way to keep your students engaged and um, moving during a lesson. These invitations are a great way to give your students both an incentive and to keep them engaged. They are really fun and super simple. You can choose to do uh, a otter pop like you see in this picture here and invite your students to come together and have a little otter pop party on a certain day. Um, you can do the same with popcorn. I know that for the next month we're sending out hot cocoa packs. Um, with our supply distribution to 
have a little hot cocoa party with our students on a given day since the weather is getting colder. Um, there is endless opportunities for this. You can just communicate with their parents and again, write this little invitation to say, um, you know, that we are going to have a party. Please keep this treat tucked to the side until this day. And then it's a fun way to just kind of build classroom community and have a party together, even though you're virtual. And um, I got this idea off of Instagram. We're trying it out for the first time this month. We sent out Otter Pops. And um, I'm hoping that it goes really well. And hopefully nobody's eaten their Otter Pop beforehand. But I'm really excited and my kids are really excited for the day um, this month that we're going to all have an Otter Pop party together. So just, again, super simple, fun way. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can actually get together with um, places within your community, reach out, let them know that you're a teacher and see what kind of deals they have. I know like Pizza Hut has their Pizza Hut book club where you can give out free coupons to get a medium pizza. So if you wanted to have a pizza party, you can give those out to your students. And they also have a digital version of those coupons. So you don't even need a supply distribution day. So there's tons of opportunities. Just kind of look around and reach out to local vendors and see what they're willing to give and um, what kind of coupons that they're willing to distribute. Uh, distribute to your students and your possibilities become endless once that happens and once you start making those community connections. My next suggestion to increase student engagement is to hand out these blank bingo cards. So you can do blank ones, you can do ones that already have the content that you're going over, but just to give out a blank bingo card kind of allows you for more opportunities to um, enjoy this game together. What I would do is laminate it and then make sure to give your student something to write on it with, like a dry erase marker or a wet erase marker is even better. Um, but what you would want is for them to go ahead and fill in their bingo card. If they're doing letters, you can say pick you know, whatever letters you want and put them in your bingo card, however you would like. And you can do the same for sight words, numbers. When it's blank, again, you can use this for any type of content area. Um, and then you guys can play virtual bingo together, which is always a fun game, um, especially in the lower grades. They just love it. And even when you get... Um, into the higher grades, maybe like second, third, fourth, you guys can go ahead and add um, math problems to this. So you can just do a math sum and they can fill in these different sum options in their bingo card. And then you read out an equation and the students can go and see if they have the answer to their equation on their bingo card. Um, so again, just a really fun way to keep your students engaged while learning the different content areas um, that you're teaching and it's super versatile if you do give out a blank card, or you can, again, give out a um, card that already has everything filled in. It's up to you, but those are just some more options to increase student engagement. Another idea that you can give for a student incentive is to have your students earn a virtual hangout or playtime um, with each other and with the teacher. So I know in like K through two students are really, really into spending extra time with their teachers. So this is just a really good way to keep them motivated towards working towards this goal. Together during those hangout sessions, you guys can build Legos. Um, I just sent home Play-Doh to my students using a Donors Choose project that another grade level teacher did for our, our kindergartners. Um, you can do a STEAM project together and kind of um, just do that as like an experiment together. Or you can do a directed drawing of their choice together. These are just some ideas that I have for um, things that I think that my students would enjoy getting some extra time to do with me. Um, again, you're going to tie these to something that you would like your students to work on, a goal, um, homework assignment, whatever it might be, so that they reach their incentive. Um, 
like I said, these are just some of the ways that I have for increasing both engagement and incentives. If you have any other ideas that um, any of us can implement, please, please, please share them in the comment section below. Um, this is all I have for you, and I hope that you found something that you love and something that you want to implement in your own classroom. Like I said, I'm going to link anything that I can below um, that I showed in the video. So definitely check out the description box for any links so that you can easily implement these things in your own classroom. As always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, Loving Little Learners. I hope you stay tuned for the next video.